Hello, hello! Today I will finally be featuring the tier 10 French cruiser, the Henry IV. I wanted to wait until the AA buff came through to see how much it affects gameplay before making the commentary as I realized I would probably have to make a new one right after if the impact was large. Now first of all, uh, let's begin with a simple size comparison. As you can see, the Henry IV is the second largest cruiser. And being large in this ship, in this game is obviously not an advantage, especially if you're a squishy cruiser, you want to be as small as possible. So that's obviously a bit of a downside. Not as large as the massive, massive Moskva, luckily. Now, the armor on the ship is decent. It, uh, it has the same 25mm uh, bow that pretty much every cruiser has, so you can't nose tank, nothing special there. Not even the Moskva can nose tank in this game. But... Uh, the armor is okay. It has a 30mm deck, not the amazing 50mm of the Moskva, but uh, it does the job. Uh, and unlike the Des Moines that has a 25mm upper belt, basically on the broad side, right above where the Citadel is, the Des Moines has 27mm, which can quite easily get urmatched. This one has 30mm, so I would say in terms of being able to take hits, it is slightly better better than the Des Moines at it. Um, uh, it has 53.3k HP, which puts it, once again, above all other cruisers except for the Moskva, which sits at 65.4k, obviously the king at this. Um, it does have a 19% torpedo build. This is the same as Zao's torpedo build. Um, Hindenburg and Minotaur, for comparison, have 13%. Uh, Des Moines has an atrocious 7%. Uh, once again, pretty much beats everyone else, but doesn't even com come close to Moskva's often underappreciated torpedo belt of 27%. And since most people run the module on top, it becomes 30%. So, doesn't quite reach that, but uh, pretty damn good. Of course, one of the main selling points of this ship are the guns. Uh, at 240mm, these are the biggest guns in the... Biggest cruiser guns in the game, not the biggest guns, but the biggest cruiser guns. The AP Alpha is actually the highest at 6.2, and the HE Alpha uh, ties the Zao for the highest at 3.4k. But the reload is a pretty anemic 12.3 seconds, which combined by having only 9 guns uh, means that the DPM, both HE and AP, is going to be lacking. In fact, the Henry has the worst AP and HE DPM of all the cruisers right now. But in return, uh, the HE shells on the ship have a very impressive uh, base fire chance of 22%. Add in Demolition Expert, add in Flags, and you buff that Fire Chance to this Hindenburg Troll Armor. Seriously, all these overpens. Anyway, uh, buff you can buff the Fire Chance up to 26%. Now, uh, at the stock 22%, it doesn't make uh, the Henry a better Fire Starter than the Zhao, but it allows you to reach a theoretical 9.66 Fires per minute. Uh, compared to Zao's 10.5. So it does in fact edge out both the Hindenburg and the Moskva in fire starting potential, but it can't quite beat uh, the Zao and of course loses out to the DM, which is the best fire starter at tier 10, of, if you can land the shells of course, which is uh, why some stats like that can be a bit misleading. But um, what is worth noting is that the Henry uh, unlike many other cruisers, does have a very good uh, base range, 19.1. Once again, not quite Moskva's 19.4, but it means that just like the Moskva, you can slot the reload mod without paying much of a penalty for it, since usually the 19km is enough to make do on pretty much any map, even the highly cruiser-unfriendly maps. Now, uh, this ship used to have a massive issue with shell drag, shell drag, meaning uh, the shells would slow down massively mid-air, but that has been buffed. It actually has the second best uh, shell drag right now, so that no longer happens. In fact, the AP pen is only very, very, very slightly worse than Moskva's, and Moskva, of course, is known for having great AP pen. So overall, this, this part of the shell performance is very good. Uh, there is one big characteristic where the Henry suffers though, and that's shell velocity. At 845 meters per second, the muscle velocity is 
well, nowhere near Moskva's 985. 845 versus 985. 985, that's a pretty massive change. Even the Zao sits as, sits as 925, and the Hindenburg sits at 920. So, in fact, the only two cruisers that the Henry beats in shell velocity is the two close range ones, the Minotaur and the Des Moines. Now, it doesn't sound like much of a difference, but well, you can see some of the floatiness right now, how long it takes to land on this Bismarck. There is a lot of floatiness inherent in the shells because of the slower velocity. And this became very apparent when I tried to punish DDs in the ship. Um, in, the, in situations where I with the Zao and uh, the Moskva and even the Hindenburg were able to consistently punish DDs, um, I struggled with the Henry. Not just because it required more leading, which made the shots harder to hit, but also because the slower velocity, of course, gave the DDs more time to react and more time to evade. So that is a obvious downside. Now, the concealment sits at 12.7. This is with full stealth build, since that's pretty much what I run on all cruisers. Um, the only one you really beat with that 12.7 is the Moskva that sits at an atrocious 13.8. Even Hindenburg has better stealth at 12.3 and the rest of the cruisers are far above, like Zao has 9.7, so it's so far above it's not even worth comparing. Now, you might notice that I'm comparing this ship a lot to the Moskva in this commentary, like a lot of comparisons to that. And that's because they share a lot of similarities. They both have really, really garbage concealment. They both have a low barrel count. They both have low DPM. In fact, Moskva used to be the lowest DPM cruiser until the Henry arrived. They both have high AP pen and so forth. But once again, you, that shows you how misleading some statistics can be when Moskva is considered a, the lowest DPM cruiser. And it's of course not a bad dam damage dealer at all. And unlike the Moskva, uh, the Henry does have torps, but it's still the same 2x3 launchers that you have ever since, I think, tier 5 or so. And each torp only deals 14,833 damage, and they are really more of a panic measure than anything else. I mean, let's say you rush Yamato, if you la launch 3 torps and you land all of them on his torpedo belt, uh, you're going to be dealing less than 20k because of how much torpedo reduction he has. So with a 90 second reload on the torps, don't expect to be firing them often in a brawl. They do have one significant use, which often it was one, which is once again uh, the underestimated side of having torpedoes, and that's that you can use them uh, for estimating the speed of your target ship, especially since this ship suffers from fairly show, slow show <laughs> fairly slow muscle velocity uh, the ability to use the torpedoes to predict where you want where you need to aim and how much you need to lead is very useful now the buffed aa is actually quite good with eft and aa module as i run in this uh, game you can reach uh, 7.5 km range on the high caliber guns and 6.5 on the medium caliber. You actually don't have any low caliber guns, so you only have a long and a medium range aura on this one. Now, you're not going to be dethroning the Des Moines in terms of anti-air power, uh, but I would say carriers want to actively avoid your defensive AA, because uh, when, you got, when you're popping the consumable, you will be shredding planes. Uh, so unless they want to be losing a bunch of planes unnecessary, they will want to actively avoid you. I'd say with the manual AA build, um, you would probably be able to shred planes pretty easily, but uh, considering the lack of carriers in the current meta, I don't really consider specking so heavily into AA to be worth it. Now, maneuverability-wise, well, with the ship as big as this, it does come with some downsides. You have an 840 meter turning circle, which uh, puts you at the same turning circle. That you're tied with the Zao for the worst turning circle, basically. Uh, but the rudder shift is 8.7 seconds with the module, of course. I always recommend the rudder shift module. I think on every other cruiser except the Des Moines, I can get away with it. Uh, that's the only one I reckon that can get away with it. But yeah, with the module you reach 8.7 second uh, rudder shift. Now that's not that special, considering Zhao can reach 6.1. 
but it's not as awful as uh, Hindenburg's 9.7 second uh, rudder shift. So once again, you're kind of in the middle of the pack, but you do have the worst turning circle. But the real strength of this ship is really the sheer speed. That's the other selling point besides the big caliber guns. Uh, even without the unique speed boost that this line gets, or this cruiser line gets, the Henry can do 35 knots. Now that's that beats both the Moskva and the Zao, which used to be the Speed Kings at 34.5, but the Henry does 35 even without the speed boost. Speed boost. Speed beast. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, when you add in the speed boost, uh, it, it just becomes a monster at speed. Uh, you can do 32 knots uh, with the speed boost active. In fact, we can see it now accelerating, accelerating, accelerating 40, 41, and you keep accelerating all the way to 42. If you run uh, the speed flag on top, you can do 33.9 knots, which is very impressive. Uh, but it does have its downside, as you saw how, when I turned how quickly the speed bled. This ship, uh, this ship uh, bleeds speeds in turns at a pretty insane rate. So, you, but with the speed itself, you are able to hunt down anyone. You are able to flee from anyone. Um, but because of how much speed it loses when turning, you can't really use it to actively dodge shells. Well, I mean, you can use it to help in dodging, but it's not nearly as valuable. It's most useful for repositioning, kiting in straight lines, or chasing someone. I mean, you can you can catch any ship besides pretty much a Cabal and a Tashkent. I think those, those are the only two ships that can actually get away from you when you're using the speed boost. Also, um, if you run the module, the uh, speed boost module that increases the duration by 50 seconds instead of the already impressive three minute speed boost you'll have a 4.5 minute one as you can see in uh, I'm, as I'm running right now which makes it very very strong and uh, luckily the Henry does not lose rudder the same way the Saint Louis does the Saint Louis lost rudder all the time which made, made it highly frustrating but this one doesn't have the same issue now of course, when, it, when you have such a great selfish consumable, as we can see here, it does come with its downsides. You don't have a fighter plane, so you have no additional spotting to give if you are hiding behind an island, someone else is hiding behind an island. You have no way of really gaining vision on them. Uh, you have no radar, you have no smoke. You don't have the concealment for sneaking up and helping out your DDs when they're going for a cap, like the Zao does. You have very little team utility at all. Now, the only thing you can really bring to, let's say, a division, if someone invited you to a division and you brought the Henry IV, the only thing you really bring is damage. And, uh, I mean, considering you're already at the bottom of the DPM charts, that's not really too shiny a resume, but it can't tank the same way as the Moskva either, so don't expect it to be blocking any pushes like the Moskva can, but it does excel if the enemy does push into you, like when big battleships try to push into you, you can burn them to a crisp very easily, because high fire chance, great range, good speed, you can easily position yourself where you can make the most use of this. And, I mean, once again, something most cruisers are good at, but thanks to the additional speed, you're very unlikely to find yourself in situations you can't get out of. You will almost always be able to escape unless you over commit very, very heavily and position yourself terribly. And uh, also, you are a high... you can have a pretty good influence. Now, I won't say high influence on the map, but you can have easily spread your influence all over the map because you have the good range and you have the great speed which allows you to reposition wherever you're needed the most. So, team utility-wise, I wouldn't say this ship brings much at all to the table. In fact, almost any other cruiser uh, can bring more team utility. But that's not to say that the Henry IV is a bad ship. Um, it's quite fun to play. Uh, you, you, the speed allows it to have... Once again, you very rarely find yourself in bad positions or uh, somewhere where there you can't fire because all you need to do is pop, press F and just zip to the other side of the map where you're useful once again. 
So, a okay, a fun ship, but if I had to pick one, it would be mostly for solo play. This is not the ship I would particularly want in my division. If I'm a battleship, once again, why would I really want this guy? If I'm a DD, I'd much rather have a Moskva to help me with the radar, or Des Moines to help me with the radar, a Minotaur to help me fight at the cap itself. Even a Zao that could sneak up, 9.7 concealment, Zao can sneak up right, ne right behind me as soon as we spot the DD, he just wrecks him. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't really bring that much to the table, but what it does, it does well. So, it's not a bad ship, per, per, per se. I'm really having a hard time to quantifying this ship. I, in fact, I've already played like 30 games in this ship, which is quite a lot considering I've, I've had it for a couple of days. And 30 games in it, and I'm averaging 130k damage in it, which I consider very good for a tier 10 cruiser, especially one that I just unlocked. In fact, I've even had a zero damage game in this, ga in this ship. I was talking to my chat. Uh, and I missed a T10 battleship shooting at me, I looked back, I got devastated strike. I did zero damage in a game, and I'm still averaging 130k damage in it. So, um, I, I would say that those average stats are going to increase, which might make this like my highest damage cruiser out of all the tier 10s. So obviously it's very very good at dealing damage, that's its specialty. But, how if is it actually strong? Um, that's quite hard to say because once again the influence you have on a map um, of on in any particular part besides burning down battleships is pretty damn minimal especially because of the well slow shell velocity hard to deal with dds no concealment hard to surprise anyone uh, if someone smokes up well the only thing you can do in the ship is flee there are it's hard to have a big impact on your win on your win rate in this ship. The only thing you can really do is deal damage, and that's kind of where it starts and where it ends for this ship. Anyway, I'm rambling now because I'm having a hard time put put the words how I feel about this ship. This game ends 258k damage, um, dreadnought, which is always nice, and the usual arsonist with their stuff, which you will farm a lot of in this ship because of the fire starting capabilities. Looking at uh, the base XP, 3000, didn't get my Kraken sadly, lots of chances to get kills but they were kind of finished off for me. Um, I queued up with a carrier just to see what the AA was like, didn't really have too many chances but even then, once again the AA is, eh, it's okay, it's not going to be anything special. Looking at the damage dealt, it pretty much going to look a lot like this. Oh, usually though you might even see a lot more HE and fire damage than you do see here. The AP is pretty damn great, but most of the time you're going to be spamming a lot of HE simply because there's going to be a lot of angled ships because, well, you're not going to have an easy time getting free broadsides in the ship because of the spotting and so forth. But when you do get broadsides, well, you saw how punishing the ship AP is when you do get the chance to use it. Overall, hard ship to quantify. I would say very strong damage dealer, but very small impact in general, besides the obvious damage dealt. Anyway, let's move on to my recommended build for this ship. Starting off, we have, of course, the modules. Not much to talk about, since this is a tier 10 ship, but consumable-wise, premium repair, premium heal, I'd say premium speed boost in this order, and finally, premium defensive AA. I don't really recommend the use of Hydro since, well, you're rarely gonna, going to be in situations where you need it, whereas defensive AA has much larger team utility. Upgrade-wise, uh, main armaments mod 1, um, AA guns mod 2, you want to increase the range of your AA since, as I said, uh, it's not that strong but it does it will shoot down planes especially if you increase the range on both the medium and long range auras reload mod because well your range is already so good at a nice 19.1 km engine speed boost mod this is the one you should have you should have bought a few of these from clash of the elements should have gotten one from ranked you should you should have one of these extra because this ship benefits so much from having that additional speed boost duration Rudder shift, because, well, uh, shared place with the worst turning circle. You really want to be able to turn in this thing. 
and concealment system mod 1 because well without it you don't really want to be seen across the map in this thing trust me on that one looking on the build itself priority target still number one for cruisers um, you can get away with getting adrenaline rush right away but the turret traverse is pretty nice because uh, it doesn't have really have the best turret traverse especially when you slot the reload mod which nerfs it even further um, I'd follow it up with superintendent additional speed boost additional heal very useful concealment and at this point uh, there is some leeway um, personally I like going AFT to increase this range to 7.5 on these and 6.5 on these so personally I recommend getting AFT at this point especially as the tier 9 before this also has good AA so you can build into AA the St. Louis uh, that is St. Louis you can already build into AA earlier and uh, benefit on the Henry now here there is some uh, I've been undecided myself now uh, fire chance is only 2%. This is a fairly small buff considering your fire chance is already so high on this ship. So the actual benefit from this perk is very very small. Whereas vigilance, uh, when you actually need it, the benefit from this is fairly large. However, I find myself so very, very rarely making use of vigilance, making use of torpedo dodging in the ship. Because you spend so much time uh, at long range that you are very rarely... Um, the one who is spotting the torps, the one who is seeing them, or the one who is being torped in general. Because of your speed and such, DDs don't really want to go for you to begin with. So, vigilance is extremely situational, but highly useful when you need it. Uh, whereas, Demolition Expert is useful every single game, all the time. But the actual benefit is very, very small. Because, as I said, when you already have a high fire chance, the benefit uh, gets incrementally smaller. So, I'm honestly still undecided here. I don't think either one is a bad choice. Uh, vigilance can might save your skin or might save you from some damage in like 1 out of 15 games, maybe. Um, on the other hand, Demolition Expert will give you a better, better damage every single game. So, here we have... Uh, a bit of a which philosophy do you agree with do you agree with saving your skin every now and then or do you agree with something that's going to be useful every single game guaranteed so uh, personally I've gone for demolition expert so far and I quite liked it but I, I'm not gonna say that's automatically the best choice because as I said there there can be some certain debate to be made here about which one is better anyway that was my uh, Henry Ford commentary and my recommended build I hope you guys enjoyed it